Hi, this is Cheryl St. Pierre of Majestic Wire Artworks. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this 90 degree pendant bar with swirls. And I give it the name 90 degree because um, it has a 90 degree angle in the shape of the pendant bar. So I also wanted to show you that I make all of them with um, the same swirls each time and you are welcome to join me in making the swirls the same or coming up with your own design but just use my basic instruction and now I had a customer order and she asked for four and these are oxidized and buffed to show the highlights of the copper and it, as you see They've all got the basic swirls, but they're each a little bit different. But that's, I mean, that's what happens with finger swirling is you can't control it 100%. See this one, the swirls are closer to the bar. These, this one's further inside. This one's, one's it's a little lopsided, and you know what, that's okay. This one, they're closer in the center and a little bit lopsided. But there, there's no way of avoiding that. But everybody knows that they're handmade and they're still beautiful even though there's little imperfections and that's that's the beauty of handmade is those imperfections it makes each piece unique so this is what you're going to need for tools to make this you're going to need your uh, hammer um, i've got a ball peen hammer because i like using the ball but i mean you could use a regular hammer and just make texture with it um, that's up to you. You're going to need something metal to hammer on, like an anvil. Um, I know BB Craft does sell them. I got this from a metal working shop, and I went in and I asked for it. Some, some of them charge you money. Some of them give you it for free. So you're going to need something to do the hammering on. You're going to need your round nose pliers and your chain nose pliers and your snippers as per normal. And for supplies, you're going to need two gauges of wire. You're going to need 16 gauge for the base wire, which gives it uh, more strength. And then um, 20 gauge for the swirls. And you're going to need a six and a half inch piece of 16 gauge and two 15 inch pieces of 20 gauge. And that's all you're going to need to make this. And then um, if you choose to oxidize, and buff that's up to you but I love the finished look when you do that with this it really shows off the swirls and uh, so anyways let's begin so the first thing you're going to do is take your six and a half inch piece of 16 gauge and you're going to straighten it and you can straighten it um, with your pliers what whatever you feel straightens it with your hands it's just going to be a basic straighten right now just so you can find the center so you're going to take your ruler another piece of that I, I forgot to mention you're going to need your ruler and this is six and a half inches so you're going to find the halfway point which is three and a quarter inches and so I've got it at three and a quarter inches and I'm going to bend it and the measurements will be in the description in metric as well um, as as usual and then I want you to take your round nose pliers and I don't want you to make a huge loop just um, the center to be basic loop because the wire itself is quite big so you're gonna bend it like this and then you're gonna cross over like this the loop is going to end up big because the wire is so thick it's going to be bigger than what you did anyways is that is just to give you the strength okay now the next step is, is we do want it to be 90 degrees and see it's out too far I want it to be 90 degrees so you're going to hold it so that this is level and then make it so this one goes straight up and that way you can eyeball that 90 degrees and see how it didn't go exactly center this one is longer than this one that's okay because from here on you need your ruler again and your snips 
and we're, we want to measure, so you're going to take this from the bottom of the loop to the tip of the wire, we want it to be three inches. So you're going to put the loop, the end of the loop at the beginning of the ruler, and you're going to see how much you have to snip off. And this one, I need to snip off that much. Okay. So you're going to carefully, and what this does is it's going to make it so that both sides are the same length. So couldn't really snip it off with the tip of the wire pliers or snippers. So you got to go back down and snip it with the with the, the center part. You're stronger there for one and uh, the pliers are stronger there as well because it's a thicker wire. And now you're going to do the same with the other side. Measure your three inches. This one's got quite a bit more to snip off. And so what you can do is just mark or hold the pliers where you're going to snip you can mark by squeezing it, then moving your pliers and going up like that. Much easier to snip from there. Your hands are stronger. The pliers are stronger. Okay, so there we go. Now, now it's equal on both sides. And now we're going to take um, your pliers and make a loop. And we're going to go inwards for both of them. You'll see what I mean when I'm... Do, you don't want to make them too big. And I'm, I'm pushing with my thumb here. To give it that strength because it's really thick wire. And we don't want to distort the other wire too much. So a nice neat loop like that. So that's called a P-loop. And now, so we're going towards the center. This one will go the opposite direction so it's facing the center. And I just flipped it upside down. And I'm going to grab it. Sometimes you got to do it because you just start strong enough to do it any other way. And so there, we've succeeded with two loops that are the same size. That's the goal. Okay, so I'm just going to move my tools aside. Now you need, the next step is you need your anvil. And we're going to hammer this loop flat. Just a couple of hits, and now um, we're going to just give some texture, and this work hardens the wire as, work hardens the wire as we go, got to talk over the banging. Don't need to do a lot. Just got to make sure you... Don't get your fingers in there. Okay. Now, when you hammer, it kind of curls the wire. So now you're going to flip it upside down and give it a few taps with the flat end of your hammer. flattened it okay so the next thing you notice that sometimes it curls too from the hammering so we're done with the anvil and hammer now now you're going to take your chain nose pliers and you're just going to go like this and straighten it and that work hardens it too and if your loop is a little bit open just tighten it up, make it flat, there, now the shape is what you want it to be, nice and straight there, and it's all flat, and it's good to go. Okay, so that gets just set down for a second, keep it handy though, because we're going to need it again in a second. 
and you're going to take your two uh, 20 gauge 15 inch length pieces of wire you're going to match up the end you're going to fold it so that you have all four ends together and you're going to pull it to find the center okay now you take you take um your center v shape and you're gonna have it so that this is underneath and make sure you got the top part there the one with the bumps and you're gonna hold it there and you're gonna pull these two wires this way over the top of the loop and then you're gonna push these two wires so i'm holding these tight in there and push those two wires so that it's wrapped tight around there and now we've got it secured and they locked in place that's always important now i want to tell you something about this i made once i successfully made a design i've always kept an example because you need that reference in front of you because trying to do a mirrored side it play from just one side if you just look at this you tend to get it wrong on the other side so always keep on hand once you have a successful one as an example so that you can follow it each and every time um it gets tricky it plays tricks on your mind it does on me anyways so we're going to just do a simple loop inwards for the first one so we're going to do, and we're going to do it step by step on both sides. So we're just, and you can aim to be over above the bar, but if it doesn't go over above, don't worry about it. Because like I said, the beauty of this is each one is unique. And now I'm going to make the same loop on the other side. So this one, the right side, I did counterclockwise. The left side, I'm going clockwise, the opposite direction. So I've tried to make similar size, similar, similar position, and it's not perfect, and I don't expect it to be perfect. Okay, so now I'm looking at my example, and what I've done is I've gone underneath from here, from the top, underneath and up, and then made a counterclockwise swirl. So that's what I'm going to do. So I've make this go up down underneath the wire and i said we are making a counterclockwise so i'm going up around like that and a counterclockwise loop and we don't want the loop to be over top of that one when we want it beside so i pulled it this way so that i not over top of the other one we want it beside so that's the look you want to do and that can be really tricky to wrap your head around how to do that so now you've got it on video and now i want to do wrap go up in the center so i'm looking at my example again i want to go in the center i'm wrapping underneath and up like that so basically just once around and now I am doing a clockwise loop over top. Okay, so that looks similar, but different. See how it's different from this side to this side? But that's, that's, that's what happens. Okay, it's still beautiful. And it's still similar enough that it passes. Okay, so now we're going to go up again like that. And we're going to go underneath the wire again. Okay, and we want it like this again. So up again. And now we want to do a clockwise loop. We want it on this side of the wire instead. So we're pushing it like this. And this is the springboard. This one's the springboard for this big swirl here, like this. So that's what we're making. 
Okay, so we got that far. And now I like to always put a space in this one. This is my habit is I always have a space in this one. That's the only one I do. Everything else is together. So that's the signature of this piece is I have that now. And I'm going to make it so that I can wrap around um, here. I'm wrapping around the root and I've got that much space. And I'd say just shy of a centimeter to a centimeter so i want to go down make a nice curve like that and it's springy and i want this one bigger so i'm pushing it back and then i'm holding it together there and i want to join them together again so i held the distance with my fingers there see like that and now I'm going to wrap around once and I want it to be ending up close to the loop. Okay, so that's, that's what that did. And it's pretty. Okay. And now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm looking at my example again. So I've got to go up to the center holding it down, go underneath and up around. So it's like that. So I went underneath and it's up around. Now I want to do a clockwise swirl to do my springboard. But I, hang on just a sec. See, I just messed up. It's counterclockwise. I had to look at this. My brain said clockwise and it's not. So counterclockwise and I want to be on this side of the uh, center wire. So I'm going to hold it like this. My springboard loop. Mm. Yes, because we want that to be on the inside. We want, because we're doing it inside. My brain was saying it on the outside and it's not. Okay. So there we go. And I'm shaping it. I want to be shape it to the same shape as the center wire here. Okay, so about, about there. Okay, and now I'm going to take the outer wire and push it back to get that distance. And we want it similar to the distance between the two wires there. So I'm holding it together at that distance. And then bringing, giving me the space there that I need and holding it in place and wrapping it around so that I end up close to that loop. And now, how does that look? It's not perfect, but that's okay. I'm going to actually push this in a smidge because I can. So it can absorb it in this springboard here. Okay. Now do they look more, more alike? Yes, they do. I don't know if you can catch that on camera or not. Okay. So we have enough movement that we can do fixing like that. I'm going to fix these loops up a little bit more here. And I'm going to to grab my pliers and I'm going to just twist this loop so it goes a little bit more level. It just gives it more, you know, just those little checks to make it look better. Now this flipped up a little bit and I'm going to put my thumb there and push it down. Not too hard because I did it too hard. Had to lift it back up, make it all level and I think we're good to go. And now, now this is just a basic, if you look here, the outer ones are just a basic round, nothing fancy. This was the hardest one. So just there, simple there. So I'm going to start with the right one and just bend it around. And they're side by side. We're not splitting them apart. But I'm making a nice loop like that. 
and then we've got to snip it off about so once we got the size that we want and it's staying there it's not springing away then you want to give yourself about a centimeter length before we snip it and make sure we don't cut any other wires just these two wires about a centimeter okay and then if this is smaller you might have to tuck it in between mine's really big on this one everyone's different and you tuck it in I've got it flipped upside down and now I'm going to loop them back to make the wires touch themselves to lock them into place and make it so that it doesn't poke anybody. And there it is. Okay, and if it doesn't quite touch, then you just carefully push it like that into place. Okay, so that's how it looks. Okay, so now I'm going to try and mimic that on the other side. So that's the hardest thing to do is get them to be the same shape and the same size. And these wires are shorter. So if that's the case, I might have to make that one smaller at the end because I obviously didn't get it centered. And I've got these wires bent here. I'm going to straighten them out. It's hindering me right now. Okay. Oh, they're going to be long enough. I'm going to be fine. Okay, that looks about equal. Yes. And now I'm going to make sure it doesn't spring too much. Okay, so I've got it and it's staying. I have to actually bend it extra to make it stay. You just got to be careful and play with it till you get there. And then snip away about till we're about a centimeter away. Got it upside down. I'm going to grab those. And holding this wire in place so it doesn't move and bend them to lock them in. I made these ones a little bit shorter than I wanted to. Um, so it was a little bit more challenging to lock that in place, but it I, it's done and it is finished. Now that's, that's a fun piece of jewelry to make and, and lots of fun to oxidize and um, buff to get the highlights as I call them. Now you might want to double check and make sure everything's sitting the way you want it to. Make sure there's no pokies. If there is, you can file the back if you needed to. Um, this one, I think I just have to tuck it in a little bit more this way. I had to push it further down that way. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. And it's, oh, I've got to tighten up that loop. Just a little bit more. So with this, because it is 16 gauge, you definitely would want to make, um, either have a jump ring or make yourself an infinity link to um, to match. And since you have your hammer and Advil ha uh, anvil handy, um, you, could, you could do that. That's your choice. Okay. Thank you for joining me in making this um, piece of jewelry, and I hope you make many of them and enjoy. Remember, once you've got your swirls down, 
And to, sometimes it's going to take you a few. It took me a few. Trust me, it really did. I, I get mixed up. Just like I got turned around there. I did, That happens to me almost every time. Always keep an example on hand. That's the best advice I can give you for this piece. Okay, thank you for joining me. God bless. Bye for now.